Good morning, everyone. The topic for today is, well, I actually have two. So the first one is you're in the right place, and the second one is to remember to control your thoughts. And so I just want to encourage everyone, including myself, that we are in the right place. No matter what the enemy tries to get you to believe or to even listen to, we've already won. It's a done deal. And when I say the right place, I mean we're in the right, the, the right mindset. Keep believing in God, holding on to his promises, seeking him, joining these um, message for the days. It's all for strength. Keep um Seeking God, and I just want to encourage you to not lose hope while we're in this process. Hold on to what God has shown you, and just trust that your believing is not in vain, and whatever you're holding on to, you're trusting God for, it shall come to pass. And then I just want to remind us about the importance of controlling your thoughts. And we can control what we think about. Kenneth Hagin had mentioned, he said, you can't prevent a bird from flying over your head, but you can prevent him from building a nest. And just the other day, and I'm going to be honest, I was just sitting there minding my own business, and a thought came to me. And that thought was, it's so much easier to just sit back and let other people be used by God. I know the Lord, he's always going to find someone else that he can use. And so I just brushed that thought off, and I kept doing what I was doing. And then the thought came back. But this time I said, wait a minute. I know this is not from God, and I know enough to know that when thoughts come, you got to do something about it. You can't just let them sit. you got to replace bad thoughts with the right ones. See, the devil, he can be so subtle. And just because you're not thinking about something sinful or evil, you still need to keep godly thoughts in the forefront. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says, Casting down imaginations in every high thought that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. And why is this important? It's because we act on what we think about the most. So I stood up, I opened up my mouth, and I was just going to say, thank you, Jesus. You are everything to me. You know, replacing that bad thought with something good, but instead the Lord used this time to, to work on me. I began to praise him and to thank him and just pray in the spirit, and then I just rested there thinking, there's no place I'd rather be than right here in the comfort of my hero of Jesus. And I was thinking, now what if, Everyone allowed that thought to manifest, that God can use someone else. What if Pastor Isaac or Pastor Ralph or any other minister said, let someone else do it? Where will we be? It's in the mind where the enemy works. And I heard someone say that in the mind is where you win or you lose your battle. So it's so important to continue to renew your mind every day. And I know that change does not happen overnight. Sometimes it's a daily, minute-by-minute thing that we do, fighting wrong thinking. And I was thinking, you can be saved your entire life or most of it and not experience all of the greatness God has because our minds have not been renewed. Romans 12 and 2 says, And be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So in other words, renewing our minds, thinking like Jesus, we will see the proof for ourselves that God's word works. And renewing in Greek, it means a change of heart and life. And the change of heart is super important because it's part of the mind, the will, and the emotions. It's where your passions are. It's what makes you do what you do. So when your body tells you that you're sick, all you have to say is, well, Father tells me in Proverbs 4, 20 through 23, my son or daughter, you attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my things. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. 
All their flesh, that means all their flesh, your brain, eyes, ears, arteries, nerves, veins, heart, lungs, glands, kidneys, muscles, bones. Now imagine if your dominant thought every day was, Lord, your words have been life and health to all my flesh, and then you just call out your body parts. We're confessing God's good, pleasing, and perfect will for our life. There's no way sickness can dominate us if we're thinking along the lines of God's word. And I'm not saying that just thinking about it makes the problem go away. I'm saying that God's laws make the problem go away. In Romans 4.17, the letter part of that verse, it says, Call us those things which be not as though they were. And then we have Mark 11.23, which I'm sure everyone knows. For verily I say unto you, that whatsoever ye shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. And shall means it will happen. And finally, I just like Brother Paul said in Philippians 4 and 8, finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. And the Lord wouldn't have said this if he didn't know it would make such a difference. And, Father, I just thank you so much for another day. Lord, I pray that everyone on this call, no matter what they're going through, that they remember that you still reign. And, Father, just show us today just how much you love us. Let it flood our thoughts all day long. Let your love be our dominant thought for the rest of the day. Lord, I thank you for meeting the needs of everyone on this call. In Jesus' name, so be it. Amen.